What about rights? I mean, the Cato Institute's very interested in libertarianism and freedom for individuals and so on. Uh, here are some rights that we might talk about. The right of non-smokers not to be exposed to unpleasant but probably not dangerous tobacco smoke, an aesthetic right, fair enough. The right of a proprietor to permit smoking on his premises, the right to a smoke-free workplace or public space, the right of a smoker to smoke when he wants. These issues, I would argue, should be decided through the political process. They're mostly aesthetic, not health-related, and uh, they shouldn't be um, skewed, as they are, by misinformation about the health risks of smoking, which contributes to the desire of many smokers to quit, which weakens their resistance to encroachment. I mean, every smoker, practically, certainly every cigarette smoker, it really wishes he or she could give up. It's a terrible habit. I know it's killing me, and so on and so on. So they, they're, they're willing victims of any kind of discrimination against smoking. They're perfectly happy to live with it because they know they shouldn't be doing it. They have, it's a guilty pleasure. Um, the main source of misinformation, I think, is the social costs of smoking beyond the effects of uh, secondhand smoke. Surely there are health costs to smoking. There really are health costs to smoking, aren't there? And this is an old argument. Some of you may recognize this, those of you who study Nazi propaganda. Nicht er sie, sie frisst ihn der Kettenraucher. This is the uh, chain smoker. He does not devour it, the cigarette devours him. And it costs the Third Reich a lot of Volkswagens. Zwei Millionen Volkswagen. Kedef Wagen. Very expensive. This was the one of the German ads against smoking. Hitler, as you all know, was a rabid non-smoker, vegetarian, but he was a dog lover. He liked dogs. <laughs> so not all bad, then. <laughs> OK, so here are the costs of smoking. Economics of smoking cessation. Here's a, from the British Medical Journal. Smoking imposes a huge economic burden on society, currently up to 15% of total health care costs. In developed countries, smoking sensation can save years of life at a very low cost, and so forth. So, so smoking is costs all of us, even the non-smokers. Uh, it's all over the uh, the world. In Puerto Rico, China is the Chinese, yeah, and Venezuela, the cost of smoking has been estimated at three to four point three to point four percent of the gross domestic product. Who could disagree? I mean, smoking clearly is massively costly, and on that account alone, we should all uh, suppress it as much as we can. But who should disagree? Good science could disagree, actually. Here is the best study I have found of this issue. It's a Dutch study, which is actually on obesity. But they compare three groups, uh, fat people, smokers, and non-smokers, non-fat non non-smokers, what they call the healthy living cohort. And what do they find? Um, let's see, this is probably hard to read. Anyway, this is what it's all about. Um, the bottom line is they find smokers save society money. They save society money. I'll skip to the chase here. Here's, here's the, you can see the smoking cohort here, healthy living cohort and the obese cohort. And these are the lifetime health care costs in the little square here. 250, uh, I think it's in euros, but I think that makes too much of a difference. 250 for the obese cohort, 220 for the smoking, and 281 for the healthy living. In other words, the healthy living people cost a lot more in lifetime health care costs. Well, how can that be? Well, it's something which is obviously going to come as a great shock to some of our regulators. Everybody dies, actually. Everybody dies. And it's very costly. Dying is very, very costly. The, uh, uh, the cost, the annual costs of health care just skyrocketed the last year of, uh, of life. I mean, it's very, very expensive. And that's what's going on here. That's what's going on. Oh, I, I had this little thing here because we can look at the years. Uh, see, the healthy living can expect 64 years of life at age 20. That's 84 and so forth. So you see the differences in the estimated lifespan of the, the fat people and the smoking people. But p uh, other estimates are different. Here's another one which says only 4.3 years difference between smokers and non-smokers. So a lot of argument. 
about the life expectancy. But clearly, smokers, on average, have a lower life expectancy. OK, and this is just a quote. Uh, the bottom line is, uh, this, uh, the high medical costs of smoking-related diseases are more than offset by the lower survival of smokers. This is a harsh judgment, seems very callous. But in fact, the cost, the healthcare costs of smoking were used as one of the arguments in the uh, infamous tobacco master settlement agreement. So it's fair enough that the smokers say, well, we actually don't cost you more. But they were not allowed to in the original court case. I mean, the, the judge blocked testimony on lifetime costs, which is, uh, to me, quite incredible. But anyway, because that argument had been used against the smokers. Uh, OK, so this is the conclusion of the bail study. In this study, we have shown that although obese people induce high medical costs during their lives, their lifetime health care costs are lower than those of healthy living people, but higher than those of smokers. The underlying mechanism, and this is important, that there is a substitution of inexpensive lethal diseases towards less lethal and therefore more costly diseases. One could argue, I was thinking about this today, that you know, there's a lot of money spent on heart, disease research, on cancer research, on Alzheimer's, mental health research, stroke, and so on. But in fact, we ought to be thinking about the cost to the individual and to the society, not of dying, but of dying in different ways. And it is, of course, much better to die of a heart attack than of 20 years of dementia. So we ought to be spending more on those diseases and less on the ones that kill people quickly. Because face it, folks, we're all going to die. 